Hey everyone, I'm Jenny with the GoBucks Art Crate and I'm going to teach a class today on some ornaments. This video is made for Fossil Distance Learning Program, but I decided to make it open for everyone to watch because it's something that's fun for lots of different people of all different ages. So I'm going to take you through how to make some really cute ornaments. This particular class was designed for the K through fourth or K through third graders. And, but honestly, anyone of any age can do this and it's, they're cute and fun. We're going to do a snowman and a polar bear. So let's go ahead and take a look at our supplies and get going. All right. So we have in your guys's kit that was shipped to you. If you are with fossil distance learning, you got your paint colors and this little container works excellent as a paint palette. So you'll, you'll actually tap your colors out into the lid. And you can also tap them out. If you need extra room, you can use this as well. And then when you close the paint back up in here, it stays nice and moist so you can use it again. So the other day I actually taught a class using that and you can see my paint is still glossy, which means it's nice and wet in there. So I could technically use that again and you can keep it as long as you want. So in your kit, you'll also have gotten um, a set of brushes. We have 10 brushes in the set. We probably, well, we definitely will not use all 10. There's a few that I really like to use most of all, and I'll guide you through that. If you're doing this on your own at home without uh, the learning program, you can use just any assortment of brushes you have. You'll want to just have some larger size, medium size, and smaller size ones, and you'll be just fine. I am going to reference these brushes for the school though, as I teach along. So just use something that looks fairly similar and feels comfortable in your hand. And then you guys will have your stretchy gold string, which you can cut down after you uh, loop it through here if it feels too long. I'm gonna move that aside. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and get started now. I put all five colors on here. So we've got the three primary colors, which are blue, yellow, red, and then we have black and white. You can see I didn't put very much paint on my palette because these take very little. So you don't have to use a ton of paint. But let's go ahead and uh, get started. So I'm gonna pick up my lar one of my largest brushes. I like this one, it's nice and flat. It's gonna be perfect for painting the background in. And actually I'm gonna mix color with it first. On the handle is a little five slash eight. So just find something that's about a half inch wide. Go ahead and dip it in your water cup, swish it back and forth. And then I'm going to dry it off on my paper towel. Make sure you get this little metal part dry too. Sometimes you get a little drop of water that's hiding on there and it can roll down and create a little bit of a mess. So we are going to mix the background color and then we are going to use a smaller brush to paint some shapes in and then we'll go back to this big brush to fill in the background color. So let's go ahead and Mix some white and some blue together. Just pull some blue aside, stir a little white into it. Every time I mix color, from, I grab it from the outside edge so that I know if I need pure white later, I can grab it from one of these other outside edges. You can wash your brush in between selecting colors. But for this particular one, don't really need to. So let's let's make a blue that you like. You might like a darker blue, which means you'd have more blue and less white. Or you might like equal parts blue and white, or you might like a pale blue, which would be a lot more white than anything else. So I'm going to set this down right here. You can set it on your paper towel. And now I want to pick up one of my small round brushes to draw with. So if you've got your little 10 piece set set, just pick one of these little round ones. It doesn't matter which one. Dampen it in the water, then dry it off here. I find the water just makes it a little more flexible and it helps glue these bristles together a little better. So let's dip our brush in the blue that we just mixed. And we're gonna paint a snowman head. I know snow, the snowman is white, but we're actually gonna draw the outside head with the blue and paint the background all around it. So take a look at where this hole is because that's how your ornament's gonna hang. And we'll try to keep our snowman from being too crooked. It can be a little crooked, it's okay. But we don't, we don't want it to be too crooked. So I'm gonna drop down underneath this drill hole down to about just a little bit above the middle. I'm gonna make a little dot. 
I'll make it a little bigger so you can see it on camera. And then I'm just going to turn this dot into a big half circle. So it's almost like we've got a, a moon coming up here or a sun. It's like a sunset. A blue sunset. Wouldn't that be cool? <laughs> Maybe in some other galaxy, some other planet, there's a blue sunset. Okay, so just do a rounded shape. We can clean it up later with white. Let's wash this little brush off. And we'll set it aside. We're going to use it again in just a little bit. Let's pick up our big brush again. And now all you have to do is paint a thin coat of this blue all around your circle you just drew. And I want to do a fairly thin coat because if you do it too thick, it's going to take too long to dry, which means you'll have to wait and wait for uh, painting the hat on. So a nice thin coat is going to dry really quick. And even though it is a thin coat, it's nice and blue. It's such a pretty color. So just carefully go around your snowman head. And you can turn your brush and use the skinny edge to get around the circle. I do that a lot. And I'll smooth out my brush strokes. The cool thing about these ornaments is you have two sides to work with. So later on after you do this whole video, you can uh, flip it over and do the other side. Um, we do have a grade four through eight class that uses the exact same paint palette. So, and I'll be teaching that in another video. So you could do that class on YouTube and have ornaments where you get to choose whichever one you want to hang that day. So let's, uh, let's take this same brush. We're going to move this aside. And that's the snowman. We're going to work on the polar bear now. Now the polar bear, I'm going to actually darken my blue just a little bit. So it looks a little bit more like maybe a night sky. So you don't have to wash your brush because we are using the same colors, the blue and white. We're just stirring a bit more blue in there. Now if you want, you can make a purple background by mixing some red in there. Or, uh, you know, it's your choice. That's the cool thing about painting. You can choose what you want to do. You don't have to do exactly what I'm doing. You could do a black background if you really wanted it to look like a night, 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 midnight sky. I'm going to set the brush aside. And just like last time, I'm going to grab a smaller brush, just one of your little round ones. And I will dip it in this color. This time, we're going to do a similar thing, only it's not going to be as much of a rounded shape. I'll show you the shape we're going to draw. Let's make some marker points though. So let's find this little drill hole and I'm going to drop down maybe about a little over half an inch, about that far, somewhere in that, in that realm. It doesn't have to be exact. This time I'm going to turn it into, it's almost like I'm drawing a Halloween ghost. So I'm going to go out and around and down like that. And if you need to redraw it, we paint white all throughout here so you can cover up anything that got messed up really easily. And we'll actually paint the ears on later. But for now, just that sort of ghost shape, or if you want to call it a mountain shape, if you don't like ghosts. <laughs> this is a friendly ghost. A friendly ghost that will soon become a polar bear. So I'm going to wash this brush off. Just brush it really gently back and forth across the bottom of the cup. You don't want to push too hard when you wash it because we want to keep these brushes nice. You can use them for a long time that way. If you push too hard when you're washing, they can tend to flare out a little bit and get frayed. So I try to avoid that as much as possible. Now let's pick up our big guy again, whatever big brush you used. And we're going to go around this ghost shape. Just paint right over that drill hole. I can see my snowman background is already almost dry. So same thing, we want to make this coat of paint fairly thin. Timing is everything with these. There we go. Now one thing you can do on your own time too, like after you do the class, you can uh, paint the sides just by like you would take your brush and just pull it downward. That seems to work really good, although I don't have very much paint on my brush, so it's not working real great. 
But yeah, you can do that on your own time if you want to. You could do like a red and white stripe pattern, like it's a candy cane, that's kind of fun. Okay, let's wash our brush. Once you have your, your blue paint painted around your ghost or mountain shape, and this doesn't have to be perfect. I've got some funky edges here. I'm not even gonna worry about it because I'm gonna bring that white in later, which will take care of that. All right, let's go back to snowman while we wash our brush. Very similar ornaments right now, but then they change up a bit. We're gonna use this same brush or one similar, like I know in your kit you've got another one that's almost the same size. It doesn't matter which one you use. But I'm just gonna go ahead and use this one and just to fill in the snowman head. So this time we're taking pure white so you can just pull a little white from the edge where, <laughs> where the paint's clean and start filling in the bulky middle part of this. I think we'll use a smaller brush to get around the edges. If you end up with a little bit of blue mixed in here, that's totally fine. In fact, I oftentimes when I paint a snowman, I'll shade him a bit in blue. So the snow is white, but with a touch of blue to it. So don't worry about that if that happens. I'm ready now to switch to a smaller brush. You can see, I'll hold that up there. You can see I kind of left the brown edges around there. And let's pick up a small brush again, whichever, maybe the one you were just using. And let's go ahead and dip it in the white paint. And now I can carefully kind of clean up the edges here. I was so happy to find these ornaments because I do a lot of paintings on ones that are slices of wood from like a maybe a tree that's come down or something. And they look really neat because you have the bark around the outside edges, but they can be a little harder to work with for painting because you get all kinds of different textures, pretty rough texture. So these are really smooth and I thought, these are awesome. These are awesome for what we're doing. So now I feel like I want to paint, maybe a, now that I've done around the edges, I'm going to paint just a little bit more white over the face. So I can see through it just a bit. And we could make this a little bit bigger if you felt like your snowman head is too small. We've got the whole ornament to work with. So if you want to make it bigger, I've taught a lot of a, a lot of classes before and I find that a lot of times people are a bit more careful and make it too small. And I do that too. You can see I just did. I made it too small. So I'm, I'm going to go in here and make it bigger. So you can do that too if you need to. This is the fun thing about a me painting along here, you can see all the mistakes I make. <laughs> and I've been painting for lots and lots of years, but I definitely do still make little mistakes I have to fix. But now that I've been painting so long, I know how to fix them pretty easily. So uh, now I'm gonna go back to my big brush. Like I said, I was going to, and I'll put a little more white paint on the face. I do have a bit of blue mixing in on the edge like I had talked about a minute ago, and I like that. We just got a little shading over here. There. Right now this could become a whole different scene. Like we could do trees and it could be the moon rising up, trees and stars. That's a whole different painting. You can do that on the backside. <laughs> Let's go back to our polar bear. We're gonna do the exact same thing and then we're gonna paint some ears. So first let's pick up our biggest brush, which I just washed. One of your biggest brushes. This one's about a half inch wide. And I'm gonna paint this ghost shape. We'll fill it in with white. I'm gonna do the same thing I did with the snowman where I leave the space around the edges to come in with a smaller brush. 
I tend to be a bit more careful with a smaller brush and you'll probably be the same way. So it's always a good idea to switch down a size when we have all these sizes to work with. Okay, I'm gonna switch to that small brush now. I bought a whole lot of these and I had some fun at home painting different things on them, coming up with ideas. So I painted a reindeer on one and I painted a uh, snowflake, big snowflake. And then I did a Santa on one. I should have brought those to show. I do have a couple I can show you here in a minute. Uh, so I taught the teachers and we made some fun ornaments of this same type of ornament the other day, last week actually. And I've got those right behind me. So just keep filling that in. Here's what we did with the teachers. So similar, it's just, uh, we, we used glitter. <laughs> we had fun with the glitter. But yeah, we did the barn and the snowman and then the big snowflake. So these are different things you can do on these. Have fun with it. You've got the whole backside to work with. The other thing you can do, you can paint on um, river rocks. Just make sure you clean them and let them come up to room temperature if you brought them in from outside. And you can paint rocks and you can even keep them outside and the paint won't wash off. It's kind of cool when you use acrylic paint. Okay, so now I'm gonna paint some ears on my polar bear. I'll uh, d take my little brush I was just using, dip it in white unless you still have white on it. I tend to just automatically wash my brushes. And we're just gonna do two little rounded bumps for ears. So I've got one here they're not huge ears, like like Mickey Mouse style. They're they're a little bit smaller, about like that. And then I'm going to fill those in, and later on we'll we'll actually paint the inner part of the ear a different color. But for now, let's fill it in. And it's totally okay if you get a little blue streaking in there. We can clean that up later. It's an easy fix. Also, what we'll do in just a little bit, we're gonna make him look really furry on the outside edges, which is super fun with polar bears. They've got that big furry coat. I'm gonna wash that brush. And if you feel like you need a second coat of white on here, as long as you did a thin coat, you can probably put a second coat on right now. If it doesn't stick as you're trying to paint it on, it doesn't really stick on it, you need to let this dry just a little bit longer. But I'm just gonna put a tiny bit more white in the center face area. That should do it. Already you can tell it's a bear or it's a white frog. And <laughs> these are its eyes and it's looking up. Lots of different things you can see, lots of pictures you can see in these as they come together. Okay, back to snowman. So our bear is going to rest a bit and we're going to work on the snowman hat. Let's wash our big brush. I think we're done with the big brushes. So this one gets to go to bed. Have a nice nap. Long winter's nap. So now I want to go to one of my small round brushes. They're all very similar in size, so it really doesn't matter which one you pick. Just a small round one. I think I'm just going to keep using the one I've been using. And we're going to use this and draw a big black top hat. So it's going to end up looking very similar to this. I'll show you how to do it. So let's take our brush, dip it in black. And now we're going to, the hat's gonna really stretch far across the head. So way over here, I'm gonna make a little line that angles out, like it's kind of going up off the edge here. And then I try to match that up over here. So two short lines that go out, almost like he's got a little antenna. <laughs> and now the top part of the hat, we're gonna draw this part that goes across here. It's gonna connect these, the top of these two lines. 
we want that curve to match the curve of the head. So just watch me do it, and then you can all the way across. See, I'm trying to just draw parallel with the curve of the head and all the way across like that. We'll fill this in in a minute, but I want to show you how to draw the top part of the hat. Then we have a whole entire shape to fill in. So the top part of the hat is kind of, it's not very tall because we don't, have, we'll run out of room. <laughs> and I'm just gonna do again, remember how we did these lines that went out? We're gonna do the same thing, only they're gonna be a lot closer in. So I'll do one here and then one over here. Can't go too far up because I'm gonna run into my drill hole there. And it's totally fine if you do end up doing that, just paint right over it. So now the curve to match these two lines together, we want to match this one. So all the way across. And then I'm going to, to close this design off so that I know what I have to fill in. I'm gonna go around the top of the head. So just trace along where the white and blue meet. And now I've got a hat. Very cool. I'm gonna wash this brush off. I'm gonna use a little bit larger brush to fill it in. So in the 10 brush pack, you've got this one. What is it? Number four on the handle. It's a little flat brush, has slightly curved edges. I love this one actually. I use this a lot with this kit. And go ahead, you can dip it in the water cup, kind of brush it lightly back and forth across the bottom of the cup. And then we wanna dry it off. Sometimes I'll just fold my towel over the brush and just pull the brush out. And I know it's totally dry. And dip it in the black. Let's just fill in this whole entire hat. Easy peasy. The light kind of makes this glary. So I'll hold it like this while I'm doing that. Definitely looking like Frosty the Snowman. Maybe we'll channel some snow by painting this. That would be nice. I like a little snow. I guess as long as I don't have to drive a lot of places, it's okay. There. Nice little top hat going on there. And now I'm going to paint the face, but I'll let you finish the top hat up and then we'll talk about uh, the color we need to mix for the carrot nose and how we do the eyes and all of that. The eyes, mouth are super easy. Carrot nose is super easy too. Now you can, later on when your snowman hat dries, you can decorate it however you like. I did this one with uh, just a little flower up here, but another thing you can do is you can do like a ribbon, like a band across this where the lower part of the hat meets the upper one in any color you want, but you definitely want this black to dry or it's all gonna smear together and we don't want that. So now I wanna find a little tiny brush for doing the carrot. And I, there's one in my kit that has two slash zero. Whatever your smallest round brush is. So let's grab that. And yeah, we can dip it in the water. Kind of loosen those bristles up. Then just wrap your paper towel around it and pull it through. And we're going to mix carrot orange. So this red and yellow together the red really overpowers the yellow. So we want we actually want to use more yellow than red for this. So I'm going to scrape off a little yellow and then just a tiny dot of red and start with that. You can see how that tiny dot of red, it really took over. But now I do have a nice carrot orange. If yours looks too close to like a coral or a pinkish, then get some more yellow in there. So if it looks too red, too coral, then yeah, put a little more yellow in there, that will help. Now to paint the carrot nose, 
Let's see. So what I like to do first is I, hopefully the, the center of your face is mostly dry. It can be a little sticky. That's, that's totally fine. And you know, when you paint the nose on, if, if you, some of your white paint smears into it, just keep going with it and we'll just plan on touching up or giving it a second coat on the carrot nose if needed. So what I'm going to do is find the center of the face right about there and just make a dot. Now your snowman nose could be as simple as that, but we're going to, we're going to change it up just a bit. So from there, I'm going to sort of come, I like to come slightly up at an angle with a line and then back down. So I'm making a, tr a skinny triangle that's kind of pointing up here. And then I want to, when I get down here, I want to close this off and I do a slightly rounded line, like a backward C shape. And then I can fill that in. So again, if you're getting some white paint streaked in there, just go ahead and do your little coat of orange. It might turn kind of peach because of the white, but when it dries, you can coat the orange right back over the top and, and it will be carrot orange. You're not gonna be stuck with peach. Unless you want a peach carrot, why not? So I think that's it for the orange. Let's wash our brush. So I'm gonna use this same brush, clean and dry it. And we'll paint some eyes and a mouth, but first, I like to give the snowman some blushy cheeks down here under the carrot. So I'm going to pull off a little white, put it next to the red. And now again, remember I was saying how the red really takes over whatever color you mix it into. It's super rich and potent. Let's pick up a tiny dot, just poke the very tip of your bristles in and then stir it in till you have a pink color that you like. It can be darker than mine or it can be lighter. It really doesn't matter for this part. And then I'm just gonna paint some little splotchy circles. I just sort of dab my brush around like that and I match one up over here. Now, while I've got this pink, I'm also going to give my polar bear blushy cheeks because when we're painting, we can do that. They don't really have blushy cheeks in person, <laughs> but when we paint, we can do whatever we want. So I'm doing that same thing where I sort of do a splotchy circle. Now these, if you feel like they're too red and it's bothering you, you can take a clean brush and some white. Just take a, a little bit of white. You don't need much on your brush at all. And you can sort of dab over it and lighten it up. Or you can let it dry and paint white completely over it. But I, I like them to be pretty pink. because they, They're cute. Right now it looks funny. It looks like he has scary pink eyes. <laughs> He'll, uh, he'll end up looking better, I promise, once we get that face on there. So back to the snowman. Same thing, if you feel like these cheeks ended up too pink, you can glaze some white back over. Just work some white back in them. Let's wash the brush. We're gonna use it again to paint the eyes and the mouth. So same little brush, the two slash zero, if you have this little 10, 10 brush kit, if you're using your own brushes, just find your tiniest brush. Now I'll dip this brush in the black paint. You don't need a lot of paint, so you don't need to glob it on there, just a little bit on the end of the bristles, because we're doing detail work now. So just small amounts. Now I'm gonna paint the eyes, and what I like to do first is figure out where the eyes are gonna go. I've got my carrot that kind of comes up here, so I want my eye over here above it, gonna make a tiny dot and then move over here above this other pink cheek and make a tiny dot. So they're kind of evenly spaced. I could leave it like that. You'd be totally fine. But I do like to give the snowman a little bit larger eyes because then I can put some white highlights in the eyes and they look really cute. So I'm gonna turn these into bigger circles. You can make yours with really large eyes if you like. Mine are kind of medium size, I guess. 
pretty easy. The mouth is even easier. So I'm going to use the same brush, a little tiny bit of black paint on the tip of the bristles. I'll just kind of hold it over my hand and show you. I don't have it globbed all the way down to the bottom of the bristles. It's just the tip of the bristles. And then I'm going to start right under the nose. I come down and I paint one so it looks like he's surprised. And you can leave it like that. You can completely change the expression of this and leave it like this, like he's surprised. Maybe, uh, maybe he saw a friend across the street. <laughs> oh, hey, I haven't seen you forever. And then uh, if you want to make a smile, you're just going to go up evenly spaced. There's a half smile. That's cute. But I'll go ahead and go up right over my blush cheeks. One of my favorite books that I used to read my kids when they were little was Snowmen at Night. I just love that book so much. I think the snowmen in that are so cute. So if you haven't read that book, I highly recommend you get it from the library or something. It's so fun. And then there's a sequel called Snowmen at Work, I think. Really fun books. I haven't read those in years. <laughs> okay, our snowman is going to rest for just a bit. And we can go back to the polar bear and we'll get some inner ears painted on here. So just for fun, I actually made on the original of this, I made the inner part of the ears lavender. It's just because it's a color we don't really use in this in these paintings at all. So I'm, I'm going to take a small brush again. Maybe I'll pick up this two slash zero again. I've already got pink here. You probably do too. So to turn it into lavender, all you have to do is poke your brush into a tiny bit of blue because again, the darker color is going to overpower and stir it on in. So this is kind of a bluish pink. I mean, I'm sorry, a bluish lavender. So I'm going to get a little more white in there and a tiny bit more red. Now you can make the inner ears black if you want or gray, blue. Just pick something that works for you. I just chose pink, purple, the lavender on a whim. It's like, what can I do here? Okay, I'll do that. There we go. I like that color. And now all I'm gonna do is I'm going to do, so remember we painted these half circles. We're just gonna do a smaller half circle inside. And when it meets the head here, you're just gonna close that off. So it's basically, you just painted a mini ear inside the other ear. So we want to match that up over here. And if there's any other place you want to use this purple, you can save it or mix some more. Later on, maybe you want to do some purple decorations on your snowman hat. You can definitely do that. Okay, so we've got that. We've got the, the inner ear and now we've got the cheeks. We need to do the eyes and nose, but before we do that, let's fluff this guy out. We're gonna take him to the hair salon. I'm gonna clean the, all that lavender off my brush. This is the brush I wanna use. So this is your, your tiniest little mini brush that you have in your set. And one thing I wanna do is, I like the paint to be slightly watered down, just a little bit. So I'm gonna actually dip it in the water and I put a little bead of water next to my white. And it's kind of, the water's kind of bluish. It's okay, bluish gray. Let's stir a bit of, white, bit of white paint into that. So you want it just a little bit more fluid than that is. Like this is pretty thick on its own. But I just thinned it out a bit. So I know it's hard to see because my palette is white, but there it is. You can see it's quite a bit thinner. And I'm going to come across the top of the head. And all I do is I start inside on the top of the forehead and I flick upward. So I'm giving him fuzz across the top of his head. So he's going to end up looking kind of, I need a little more paint here. It's going to kind of look like a stuffed animal. <laughs> Maybe he's kind of windblown. I'll hold this up in a minute so you can see it up close. There. Now we need to do the rest of the outside edges of the body. So this needs to go around the ears. Now if, if you can see through this a lot, just stir some paint back into your little fluid mix here. It just needs to be a little bit more opaque. 
and less transparent. So let's go around the ears, flick outward as you go around, make them nice and fuzzy. There's one ear, cute. And down the side. I love this part when I teach, have taught live classes in the back because some people really make, I've taught a very similar polar bear to this lots of times and some people really make them super fluffy and I think it's so cute. You can do that. There, got those sides. Now I'm gonna work on this ear over here. I'm right-handed, so working on the left side is always a little bit more of a challenge with any painting I do. There. Nice and fluffy. And if you end up with you can still kind of see through it and see the smooth lines that we drew at first. Let it dry and then just do this again. Just dab some white paint and flick it outward and it will be more opaque so you don't necessarily see through it as much. Let's give this poor thing a face because I just see these pink eyes staring at me and I know they're, they're cheeks, but <laughs> it looks like kind of like a crazy mouse right now. We're gonna change that, we're gonna make it into a polar bear. So let's wash this little brush off. And dry it off. Now the eyes and nose on the polar bear. So polar bears have a pretty long distance between their eyes and the, their nose. So I do, I wanna make it look more like a polar bear and less like a, a mouse or something like that. So their eyes are actually relatively small considering the size of their heads. So I'm gonna dip my brush in the black paint. You can do blue eyes if you want. It's your painting. You get to choose whatever you wanna do for any color. You can make a pink polar bear. <laughs> Why not? I know it's a little late for that. Okay, let's uh, let's paint the eyes. So way up here, I'm gonna paint two eyes. So re he really looks like a mouse right now. And you can gradually make these eyes a little bit bigger or you can make them really big if you want. But the nose that we put on now will help make it look like a polar bear because I can't unsee it as a mouse. So let's drop way down here, nice long distance. And I'm gonna do what looks like a little smile at first, even though this is actually the nose. And then this is gonna come down and scoop. So you've got almost like a little bowl shape. There. Now it either looks like a smiling mouse, totally can be that, or you can see it as a polar bear, but I'm gonna do one other thing. I'm going to make the actual mouth part. So this you wanna be really careful. If you have too much paint on your brush, let's do it, let's all wash our brushes because we don't want a lot of paint for this and dry them off. Now I like to pinch the bristles together and I'm gonna dip the very tip of the bristles in black. So you're picking up the tiniest little dot of black. See how small that is? Very tiny. And then just under the nose, I'm gonna draw a little short line that goes straight down. You can leave it like that if you like. It's kind of expressionless or you can give him a smile by just hooking up either side here. There. He's a happy polar bear. Cute, cute. Okay. Later on, we're gonna give him some shines in his eyes so he sort of looks a little more lifelike and then we'll paint some fun snowflakes in the background. It's just finish work. And that's all we're gonna do next is finish work and then we'll be done. So let's move polar bear aside and go back to the snowman. And I'm going to put highlights in the snowman eyes. Now, if you need to paint a second coat on the carrot nose, now is the time to do that. So if you ended up with it mixing with white and it turned kind of peach, 
this will fix that. So just take your orange with your little brush. Might need to mix a tiny bit more. And just give it a little second coat. You know, carrots do come in, they grow in lots of different colors. I didn't know that until not that long ago, actually. I bought some carrots that had purple carrots in the bag and white, orange. Pretty cool. I just washed my brush. And now I'm going to use it to paint the white highlights in the eyes. And then we'll decorate um, the background with snowflakes. So let's... Let's do that. Let's take this little brush, just dip the very tip of the bristles in white. So you're picking up a tiny bit, just like when we did this nose here. Now in the upper right part of each circle eye, I'm gonna make a tiny dot. Oh, my hand is shaking. <laughs> there we go. So now he's got fun, shiny eyes. So cute. Now if you wanna decorate the hat, now is the time to do that. I think we've got a little bit of time so we can these came together pretty quick. Let's do it. Let's decorate that hat. I'll show you how to do, how about a flower? That's what I did the other day. It worked out great. Um, let's do, let's do a, let's do a yellow flower. The other thing you could do is you could paint like holly leaves with red berries. That would be really cute. But if you want to do a flower, I'm going to show you right now. I do a center, just a dot, even though this mostly gets covered up. And then straight up from that dot, I paint sort of a almond shape or an eye kind of an eye shape like that almond shape and then one just below that matches and then one out to the side you kind of see where I'm going here and then one over here and then I can fill this in And I could add something else to it. I'm going to take blue and yellow and I'm going to make green. So yes, blue and yellow make green. And you, it's fun, you can play around with uh, more blue or more yellow and make a green that you like. And I could do little green leaves in between these. I'll hold this up because I know the glare is kind of making it a little hard to see. There we go. So I need to give the flower a center, but I am going to let it dry. And we'll work on snowflakes. And then we really don't have much of anything else to do on this. So I'll show you snowflakes, finish up your flower. We'll put a center in it after we do snowflakes. And easiest way to do snowflakes is to paint little dots and the easiest way to paint little dots is to actually flip your brush around and use the handle and you're gonna stamp the handle in white paint and then just dot little snowflakes all over remember they're they're gonna fall over the hat too You can make a blizzard. You can make a ton of snowflakes all over. I'm not gonna put any over my flower right now because my flower is still very wet. I feel like I need to get a few more up top here. Cute. And now snowman can rest a bit. When you do the center of the flower, you can use the handle of your brush, just like we did all of these dots. You know, I'm gonna use red and I'm just gonna stamp a dot, boom, right in the center with red. If your paint is too wet and it doesn't stick, just wait for it to dry a bit and come back to it. But there we go. He's gonna dry now and take a rest and we're gonna finish up the polar bear. So I'm gonna clean off the handle of your brush. That's super important because next time you use it, you don't want a dry glob of paint on there. Because we want to be able to always use this for stars or snowflakes, just like we did right here. Let's go to the polar bear. 
And we're going to paint little dots around this one too, but I'm actually going to show you how to paint an actual six-sided snowflake relatively easily. We definitely need a tiny brush for that, so use your smallest. And white paint, this is really easy to do. So I'm talking about this kind of snowflake right here. I'm going to show you how to do that. So to do that, let's draw a little short straight line like that. I don't push very hard. The harder you push, the thicker your line is going to be. And we want fairly delicate lines for snowflakes. So try your hardest to not push super hard. It takes some practice, so don't worry about it. If you made a thicker line, it's not a big deal. And let's go ahead and make an X through that. So now you have this little star shape. Now your snowflake can be as simple as that. Or you can do fun things to it, like I can make little straight lines at the edges. So it's like I have a whole bunch of T, letter T going around. And you can put dots in between each of these little triangular areas. Look how pretty that is just by doing a few simple little things. So now I'm going to make another one. Straight line with an X. That's how you get six sides. So this one, let's see. A lot of times I'll do a snowflake where I make a V. I guess we're painting letters here. It's educational. <laughs> We're going to do little V shapes at the ends of each of these. And that's another really fun one to do. How about one more? Now, all snowflakes are different. There are no two alike, which is just mind boggling to think about how many different patterns there are. It's crazy, but they all have six sides. So crazy. So now what I'm going to do to keep it different, I'll just do little dots at the end. So I guess we're not really doing letters unless you can call this an I. Maybe I'll do, there we go. I'm going to dot the I's. <laughs> T's, Y's, and I's. That's how you do snowflakes. Now, I am going to wash my brush. And in addition to these bigger snowflakes, I like to do the little dots. So I'm going to stamp my handle and my brush in the white again and just put these all over. So cute. We don't really need to put snowflakes over him because they won't really show up, but we do definitely need to highlight the polar bear's nose and eyes. Give them a little shine so they look a bit more lively. So you definitely want to clean off the handle of your brush before it dries. As soon as you get all your little snowflake dots done. We've got some highlights left and that's it. So we're going to highlight the eyes, a little shine on the nose, and then we're going to go back to our snowman and put a little shine on the carrot nose, and then we're done unless you want to continue painting after the video and paint the back sides. It's fun. You can do whatever you want there. So I'll take uh, my littlest brush again. You want to dip the tip of the bristles, pick up a tiny dot of white, just a little tiny, tiniest little dot you can. And just like we highlighted these eyes in the upper right corner of each or upper left, it doesn't matter. I do a little dot. Suddenly he looks more lively. And then on the nose, I just do a little shine that kind of matches the curve of the nose. Fun. And then if you need to go over any of these little fluffy areas with a second coat of paint, now is a great time to do that. I've got a couple thin spots. As the paint dries, it you can end up seeing a bit more of the blue background through it. So you can definitely give it a second coat around the edges if needed. But he's all done. And now I'm going to, while I've got the white on the little brush, I like to pull towards myself when I'm drawing lines, if I can. So I, I'll turn the ornament and then I'm just going to do a little white shine across the carrot nose. And then when you're all done, let it dry. Everything needs to dry before you put this string through it because you can accidentally run this through the paint and then it can smear, like it almost did, you can smear some of your snowflakes. These, you want to give it about a Probably because some of these white spots are thicker and, and like the flower, some thicker spots, 
let's you want to give these about 20 minutes to a half hour to dry and then you can put this through and tie it however you want and you are done you hang it up wherever you want it to be you've made these cute little ornaments and you're ready to go and then you can paint the backs there we go well i hope you guys had fun painting along with me and uh, I hope you continue to paint. You should have plenty of paint to do lots of extra special things with your paint. And uh, keep working on it. You got your brushes. You want to clean them with a little soap and water. Let them air dry and you can use them again. So we will see you next time you paint with me. Thank you again. And have a great holiday. Bye.